Hi everyone. The big takeaways from chapter 4 on states of consciousness are these. Consciousness is everything that you are aware of at any given time. That is your external sensations like, like stimuli around you. Is, is the air conditioner on where you are? You know, hear that sound? Um, stimuli around you. If you're sitting, notice the sensation of the seat pressing against your butt. You're aware of that sensation. External to you, you're hearing the sound of my voice, of course. You're conscious of or aware of many external sensations. Consciousness is also made up of your internal experiences. Uh, your thoughts, are you thinking to yourself? Your feelings, are you hungry or sleepy? You're conscious of or aware of this whole complex internal life that you have every moment of the day, right? There's always lots of incoming information entering your conscious awareness. It's amazing how we handle it all, right? So uh, that is the first takeaway. Understanding consciousness as both external and internal, a massive amount of information coming in. Um, and we can alter or change our state of consciousness at will. In your, in your textbook, they talk about changes in awareness can be produced by sleep, one of the most interesting parts of this chapter. Uh, meditation, or even daydreaming, it's a different state of consciousness. Uh, use of drugs, prescription or otherwise. Drugs are interesting. Drugs of any kind can alter consciousness. For example, um, if you have allergies, allergy medicines like an antihistamine, uh, Benadryl. Antihistamines can reduce your state of a mental alertness and uh, kind of make a person feel mentally sluggish or kind of slow slow down. Uh, alcohol use, certainly, um, uh, chemically slows down central nervous system processing, and so therefore it can alter or change your consciousness, of course. Um, understand that consciousness is both external and internal stimuli coming in. Second big takeaway, understand circadian rhythms, uh, thought of as your body's um, internal clock. That's a good um, synonym, internal clock. Circadian rhythms regulate all of your vital life functions, your heart rate, your blood pressure, things like that. In your daily life, circadian rhythm affects your learning efficiency. There's times of day when you can learn better than others. Your moods. These rhythms depend on, uh, uh, determine your sleep and wake cycles, sleep and wake patterns. Uh, they influence your mental overall mental alertness. Uh, daylight, interestingly enough, has the uh, probably the biggest influence on your circadian rhythm. Some of you, when the sun comes in the window, you may have to wake up. Um, depending on the amount of light perceived by your eyes, the, the ret retinas photoreceptors, your body will release melatonin, that's a hormone, which is released by the pineal gland. So when the sun rises, decreasing melatonin makes you feel awake. Some people actually take melatonin su supplements at night to increase melatonin melatonin, and, and thereby make themselves actually fall asleep more quickly. It's like a sleep aid. Uh, so understand circadian rhythms in this chapter, your body's internal clock. The third takeaway in this chapter is about sleep, and that really is the centerpiece of this chapter. It's so interesting. Um, most, maybe the most studied state of consciousness is what happens during sleep. Sleep is considered a form of consciousness, interesting, interestingly, because you can still sense external stimuli. Um, and we, we do react to dream content, which is actually be thought of as internal stimuli, right? So when you're asleep, you're not awake, but you are conscious. And that's why it's in this chapter. Hour by hour, we move through different stages of the sleep cycle. And you want to study the sleep cycle. We spend time in REM sleep and non-REM sleep. REM, R-E-M, stands for rapid eye movement. That's when you're uh, dreaming, by the way and non-REM, which is just the rest of the sleep cycle. Um, in your textbook, they use the abbreviation N-R-E-M, just means non-REM. That refers to the rest of the sleep cycle when you're not in REM, R-E-M. In the early hours of sleep, notice in your textbook, you're mostly in non-REM sleep, and that's when we're resting our bodies. In the later parts of the sleep cycle, hour five, six, seven, and eight, that's when REM sleep is really important. REM sleep gives students the most mental rest. You feel the most mental rest from REM sleep. So this is really important for you to know as a student who needs high levels of concentration and a really long attention span in your daily life. REM sleep consolidates learning and organizes memory and thereby gives you mental alertness during the next day. Notice in your textbook, notice the tables there. You need six or more hours of unbroken sleep every night 
to get the substantial REM sleep needed to feel mentally alert and mentally sharp. So this is essential for students in particular because our mental work in a day requires high concentration, long attention spans. Without adequate hours of sleep to achieve REM, five, six, seven, eight hours of sleep, you'll struggle all day the next day to stay alert, you'll struggle to concentrate, you'll struggle to learn, you'll struggle, your mood might be irritable. REM sleep is really, really important, especially to students. And finally, the last takeaway, brief takeaway in this chapter is about dreams. Dreams are really fascinating, but the research is very limited in psychology for good reason. Sleep researchers have studied dreams because they're just so interesting, and humans for centuries have sought meaning in their dreams, images and people and and events. But the science is really limited. Uh, We cannot confirm what dreams mean, uh, and we only have theories even about their purpose. So in summary, the big takeaways from chapter four on states of consciousness are this. Number one, consciousness is everything you are aware of at any given time. That is your external sensations like stimuli around you and includes your internal experiences. Number two, understand circadian rhythms thought of as your body's internal clocks. They regulate all of the vital life functions. And big takeaway number three, sleep is considered a form of consciousness, and hour by hour we move through different stages of the sleep cycle, mostly in in REM sleep. That's when your body's resting. And know that getting enough REM sleep is especially important for university students. Those are the big takeaways from this really interesting chapter four on states of consciousness. Thanks, everybody.